All right, let's move on to our next game. Oh, it's the Fairchild. We haven't seen this system in a while. This is a, the, the first home system to have interchangeable cartridges. Released right before Atari. And this is possibly... Okay, it looks like it's the game from Germany. Everything else we saw was from North America. This is Schach, which is the uh, German word for chess. And there's the example of the cover. Video Cart 20 for the Fairchild. And this box is different than their Fairchild boxes we've seen. Probably because it's in another country. And there's ugh, terrible picture of the screenshot there. Okay, so let's boot it up and see what happens. It's 1979. We're playing the 20th video cart on the Fairchild Channel F. Okay, there you go. So it boots up. We got the old timey. I, I put in a filter so it looks like we're watching a newsreel from the 20s. Welcome to Saba Video. Shock Computer. So the way this works is you pull up the console and on the console you decide how you want to start it. So uh, what we do is pull up the console and we have reset, time, mode, and let's just see what happens when we push start. Does the game, it does, so it is. It's, it's We're playing chess. Uh, we played other home console versions of chess and home computer versions of chess. This is our first time playing anything, a board game on the Fairchild, but it's essentially, let's see how well this plays. I can select the pawn, move the pawn tw twice. Did it move? Oh, I see. On the Fairchild hand controller, you have to make sure you're uh, selecting the correct button to push down. So let's see if I do push down and then move it here. Oh, okay, so I'm to give you a heads up, the hand controller of the Fairchild is one knob on top that has full range of motion. At the same time, it has a twisty motion, and then it also has a pull up and pull down. So I'm trying to see what is the control uh, to actually run the game. Or, or, or to move the pawn that I would want to. What if we twist it? So twisting the controller doesn't move the pawn. What about pulling up? No, it looks like pushing down does do something. But it doesn't move to the next spot when I push it down. Yeah, it's not responding after that but it does look like it selects it and the twisting note does not work so it's not uh it, it i'm trying to use the hand controller to move the pawn but it is not moving so not the best way we've seen chess the best one so far we've seen any video game chess was on the atari home computer they did it way too well all right so for star rating we're gonna go down chess for home uh, consoles hasn't been so good atari's was not good either we're gonna go down in the broken range we're gonna give that one one star because uh it, using the hand controller with so many options on the fear child just doesn't translate to a very good chess experience so from the chat chiptune chronicle said it's funny how the first console has the most complicated controller and the 20 the 2600 had the most simplest yes the 2600 was one joystick one button and that, that was it and this one this one has uh two buttons down and up and then a, a left right a full range of uh joystick and then also it can twist <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy all right let's move on to our next game this is voodoo castle on the trs 80. This is a text adventure game by Scott Adams. Let's take a look at the artwork. There is the TRS-80 uh, Scott Adams Adventure. So this is adventure number four. Remember that because we're going to need it when we boot up our TRS-80. Voodoo Castle. That looks awesome. So if you look on the left side, this is showing you a little a brief intro of what Voodoo Castle is. Count Cristo has a fiendish curse put on him by his enemies. There he lies, with you his only hope. Will you be able to rescue him, or is he forever doomed? Beware the Voodoo Man. And then it shows on the, I love on the far left how it says, the number of players is one, the language is and it's programmed in machine language, and then the average completion time, they say on average it'll take one month to complete this game, or to get to the end which is insane. And then there is an, a really lengthy overview right here, small font of, of what, what more of the game is. And here's an advertisement flyer of all the other Scott Adams adventure games. Uh, text adventure games were on mainframe computers and Scott Adams is one of the very first to program them for home computers that people could play. And there's an example of all of them. That's adventure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, all the way through 10. And this one is adventure number four. There's the example of what medium we're playing on. It is cassette tape. Voodoo Castle. 
All right, let's boot it up and see if our TRS-80 will respond. It's 1979. We're at home on the TRS-80 playing Voodoo Castle. And as always, let's see how to load the game. You have to look in the file directory. And uh, we are slightly cheating. When you play on the cassette tape, it would boot up after you do certain commands. But we're doing it on a newer version of the TRS-80. So we can uh, use disks and, and load it up. So it looks like we do ADV. I think that's how we run. And then we just pick what adventure we want. And Voodoo Castle should be adventure number four. There we go. Which adventure do you want to play? What is your name? Let's do someone from the chat. Mother Lovin' is who we are. 15 seconds, please. And it won't be really 15 seconds. We're playing on a, a faster model. The original TRS-80 was called Model 1. We're technically playing on the Model 3, just so we can go a little faster. Do we want to restore a previously saved game? No. There we go. Yeah, adventure number four. This program will lay have, to have an adventure without ever leaving your armchair. So in the 1970s, and especially 79, this was one of the most amazing things you could do on a home computer is have a text adventure game where you're having to type commands and uh, read through something almost like a uh, choose your own adventure book. And it's a, it's a virtual choose your own adventure book. All right, so this is, you can see at the bottom, the author worked over a year on this program. Don't copy or accept a pirated copy of the adventure. Don't copy that floppy. So I'm in a chapel. Visible items are a closed coffin. Some obvious exits are north, south, east, and west. Welcome to adventure number four, Voodoo Castle by Alexis Adams. Oh, it's not by Scott Adams. So this is by uh, Scott's wife, Alexis. I think that I, I read that right. Okay, so tell me what to do. Uh, open coffin. Okay, does that mean the coffin's opened? It doesn't tell us what to do. Look, can I look at the coffin? You see nothing special. Look, now this is a text parser that only understands two things. So if I try look in coffin, it won't work. So I just want you to know how simple this is. This is the, the first text adventure game you could ever play on your at your home without going to a college. And it is using only a two word text parser. So I have to one, follow the manual, which I don't have for this, this game. And then two, know what things I can put in. Let's try help and see if they give us examples. <laughs> Nothing happens, uh, which means there's not a help. What about info? I don't know how to info something. Uh, so if I, if I look, I don't see anything special, but the coffin is open. Uh, what about uh, C? I don't know how to see something. Oh my gosh, we don't have to see anything, then we're screwed. But you can choose which exits you want to do. So I choose to go north, and you you choose your exits by just putting uh, in in. So I just went north, and now it says I'm in a room in the castle, and visible items are a closed window, and obvious exits are south. We see that at the very top. And what you do in these kinds of text adventure games is you're having to write draw a map. You usually have a, a grid paper or a notepad next to you. You're drawing a map to give you um, an idea of what you see and remember what you see in each room. So uh, from the chat, Chiptune Chronicles says, did you cover any punch card games? And great question. We didn't go so old that we had punch card games. Uh, one of the best ones I wanted to do was Oregon Trail, the original Oregon Trail, but we didn't go that far back because there's no there's no way to simulate those games. We, we would have been just talking about the box art or talking about the games and wouldn't be able to actually play them because they use physical media. You have to have the uh, cards or paper uh, to print print them out. So the, the, the oldest we went back was 1971. That's where we started all our journey. So uh, it looks like uh, I went north, Ravens cry, something outside, window just slammed shut. Can I open? Window won't budge. Uh, let's try going. Okay, let's try going south. So I just went north to go here. I'm going to come back south. So you look at the top. It updated and said, here's where I am now. I'm back in the chapel. So let's try going east and see what happens. Okay, I'm east. And if you look at the top, I'm now in a tunnel. Visible items are a bloody knife. Massive stone door with sapphire set into it. And I'm taking that knife. Get knife. Yes. Okay, we got a knife. And you see it updated the top. Uh, and now the knife isn't visible anymore. One thing to note too about this adventure game, there is no picture. There, it's only text. And a lot of the, the, the adventure games we're going to see now and in the early 80s are just text. There is no pictures at all. Not even a single screen showing something. We, we have to use our, our imagination to play. 
But that's an example of Voodoo Castle, and you can really dive into it, play it, try to understand more of the, the story, what's happening. Uh, you can read a full explanation in the manual that we read, or the, the first screen. And we're not going to go too deep into it, but that's the idea of a text adventure game from 1979. And so for that game, uh, that was playing so well uh, and, and works really well. We, we played adventures, I think, one, two, and three. Well, no, one and two. I don't think we've seen three yet. But uh, for, for this one, for the time, we're going to go ahead and give this one uh, four and a half stars. This played one of, like one of the best text adventure games we played. No genre is left behind. You're dealing with uh, me, the uber nerd who enjoys so many different games. So th there's some gamers that say, oh, this isn't for me. Or that's not really my cup of tea. I like it. I like it all. So e even text adventure games. Uh, there there's some we're going to play on Commodore 64 that I could play uh, all the way to the end. All right, let's move on to our next game. Oh my gosh, I don't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the last game of the 70s. It's Zoon Zoon Block, released sometime in 1979. Let's take a look at the artwork for Zoon Zoon Block. And this is the Japanese advertisement flyer from Taito. Uh, psychedelic. It looks like we're dealing with just another breakout clone, at least from what we can see there. And there's back of the advertisement flyer. I'm not able to read kanji, so we'll just make up what the advertising is. But you can see the screenshot right here. It is a breakout clone in Japan. There's the example of the arcade cabinet. Pretty standard. And let's see, do we have a control panel? We do. So you can see there's a, a, a dial that you turn left and right or paddle if you're Atari. And you just uh, bounce it back and forth and knock the blocks off. So there's our screenshot. And this is one of the last games that did not have a microprocessor. So if we boot it up, what happens? It's 1979. Does Zoom Zoom Block load? A ball and paddle game? No, it is not. So it crashed on us because there's no microprocessor. You have to have a certain simulator for it, and we do not have that simulator. But considering this was a ball and paddle game for 1979, we're going to go and give that one three stars. It's just like Breakout, another Breakout clone. All right, so that is it. This means that we have done every game from the 70s. Uh, we've, on this channel, started 1971. For all the games in the 70s, we have checked out, not necessarily played, but checked out and reviewed, talked about two, uh, 478 games. And this concludes all the games from the 70s. So as a special treat to end the night, I have compiled all the best of the 70s for the, the, uh, everything we've seen up to this point. So let's check it out. 